Oh, good morning and uh, happy December. Welcome to the first day of our AP Calculus free response question advent calendar. Before we get into the math, let's open up the first compartment of this chocolate advent calendar. And it looks like number one is right there. The numbers are just scattered all over this. There's no rhyme or reason to it. They all kind of look like jigsaw pieces. But here's number one next to the bear and the pine cone. Let's see what's in here. I've actually never opened an advent calendar before. Okay, so I guess I have to just press down on that little knob. And ooh, look at that, there we go. We got this golden chocolate ball inside. Okay, well I get this out and unwrap it. You can read today's free response question. Let's see how long this is gonna take me. The ball just keeps spinning. You know what? I'm just gonna do a little bit of that. Look at that, that's experience, I'm slick. Very good at this. All right, let's unwrap this golden star chocolate ball. There's the chocolate. Gonna need the camera to focus. Come on, camera. Focus on the chocolate ball. All right, I can't get an up-close shot of this chocolate. I'm gonna eat it real quick, and then we'll get into the math. That's a very firm piece of chocolate. Hmm. Man, that is sweet. God, it's a little too early in the morning to be eating chocolate, but uh, that's lint chocolate for sure. That is very good. Let's get into the math. This is problem one from the 1998 AP Calc exam. And as we can see, this is from the graphing calculator section. So we may find ourselves in need as we go through this problem. Let's read it. Let R be the region bounded by the x-axis, the graph of y equals root x, and the line x equals 4. Part A is to find the area of the region R. So that should be pretty straightforward. We'll just start out with a sketch of the function y equals root x and the line x equals 4, and we just need to find the area of the region enclosed. You should know by now that y equals root x looks something like that, and the line x equals 4, I'll draw in just a second, we should probably just go ahead and label this y equals root x, and then in orange we will write the line x equals 4 and maybe that's right here. So there is x equals four. It's a vertical line. And so we are looking for the area of this enclosed region, because remember, um, this region is also bounded by the x axis, right? So it's this region here that we're looking for. This is the region R. We need to find its area. So that's just the area under the curve, y equals root x from x equals zero, to x equals four. So very simple for part A, we're just going to integrate our function, square root of x, from zero to four to find the area underneath it. Now, square root of x is the same as x to the one half. So to integrate this, we're just using the power rule. We need to increase the power by one. So x to the one half goes up to x to the three halves and then divide by that new power, which is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. That's the integral, and we're evaluating this from zero to four. Now, when we plug in zero, the lower bound, we're just gonna get zero. So all we have to worry about is plugging in the four, and we're gonna have two thirds times four to the power of three over two. Now remember, a fractional exponent is kind of like two separate operations. It tells us we need to take the square root of four because of that denominator of two, and then we need to cube the result. The order, of course, doesn't actually matter. That's just the way I like to think of it. So first, we take the square root of four, which is two, and then we have to cube that. So this ends up being two thirds times two cubed. Two cubed is eight. So it's two times eight over three. And so the answer is 16 thirds. That is the area, that's the answer for part A. I'm going to shrink our work for part A and then we're gonna move on to part B. Part B says that we are to find the value of H such that the vertical line X equals H divides the region R, so the same region as before, into two regions of equal area. 
So this sketch that we had before is still useful, but what we're looking for now is what line x equals h would we have to draw so that the area to the left is the same as the area to the right. So we'll have to set up an integral for the area on the left and an integral for the area on the right, and then we can solve that for the unknown, which is where does this vertical line have to be to make these two regions equal? So I've just copied the picture and made it a little bigger. There is our line x equals h. We're not sure exactly where it has to be. We're just putting it somewhere on the picture to help us set up our integrals. So the first integral is going to be the area of the region of R that's to the left of x equals h. That's this part over here. So for that, we're just going to integrate the square root of x from zero to h. And this has to equal the right side of the region, which is the integral from h to four. We're still stopping at x equals four. And so these things need to equal each other. We can just go through and evaluate this and then solve for h. This integral on the left is a lot like the integral we did in part a, except instead of going from zero to four, we're going from zero to h. In the part a integral, you may remember that we ended up with two thirds times four to the three halves. By the same process on the left side here, we would end up with two thirds times h, the upper limit of this integral, to the power of three halves. Now on the right side, similar stuff will happen. We'll integrate the square root of x, which again becomes two thirds times x to the three halves, applying the reverse power rule, so to speak. And we're evaluating this from h to four. Now on the left, we have two thirds h to the three halves, and then evaluating the right side, First, we plug in the upper limit, and we already saw before that when we plug four into this integral, what we get is 16 over three. So I'm just gonna write that as 16 over three. And then we subtract plugging in the lower limit, which in this case is h. So minus two thirds times h to the three halves. Then we can go ahead and add two thirds h to the three halves to both sides to collect all of the h's together. So we now have four thirds h to the three halves equals 16 thirds. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by three fourths to get rid of this coefficient in front of the h. That's gonna give us h to the three halves equals, multiply both sides by three fourths, so we're multiplying by three fourths over here. Threes cancel out, a factor of four will cancel out. And so on the right side, we're just gonna be left with four. Now we can square both sides to get rid of that power of one half. Thus we'll have h cubed equals 16, and then take the cube root of both sides. And that is the answer to our question. Remember the question here, was to find the value of h such that the vertical line x equals h divides the region r into two regions of equal area. So if we were to draw the line x equals cube root of 16, that would split the region into two regions of equal area. Let's move on then to part c. Find the volume of the solid generated when r is revolved about the x-axis. So this is a pretty standard volume of a solid of revolution problem. So let's set up the appropriate integral. I'm just gonna shrink our work for part b and then we can get on with it. So moving on to part c, we are revolving this curve about the x-axis and what that will do, I'll draw in a different color. I'm sure you know, but it's helpful to sketch these solids of revolution, especially in more complicated cases it's going to look like this, right? Because we're creating this solid by revolving the curve, the cross sections are circles, which makes finding the volume of this solid rather easy. And notice that those uh, circular cross sections have radii, which are the values of the function root x at those x coordinates. So this is a very classic example, nothing weird going on here. What we're doing is adding up infinitely many circles, which is why in this type of situation, we have to integrate pi r squared from, in this case, zero to four, right? From x equals zero out to four. Now the pi we can take out of the integral. The r 
remember, is the radius of a cross-sectional circle. And we are integrating this, by the way, with respect to x. So how do we express the radius as a function of x? Well, like we just said, from the sketch too, we can see this, the radius of each circle is just the value of the function, root x. It's like a height. So we can rewrite this integral, writing r squared in terms of x. This is, let me take the pi out. So this is pi times the integral from zero to four of the radius squared. The radius is the function. That's what gives us the height. That's root x. And we have to square that. And then this is getting integrated with respect to x. This of course works out pretty nicely because the square root of x squared is just x. So this is pi times the integral of x from 0 to 4. The integral of x applying the reverse power rule is just 1 half x squared. This is from 0 to 4. Plugging in the upper bound is going to give us 1 half of 4 squared. So that's 1 half of 16, which is 8. Plugging in zero will just give us zero. And so our final answer for the volume is eight pi, and we could say units cubed. Finally, we can move on to part D. This is very similar to part B. The vertical line X equals K divides the region R into two regions, such that when these two regions are revolved about the X axis, they generate solids with equal volumes. We need to find the value of K that causes this. So it's just the three-dimensional version of problem B. We need to find a vertical line so that the solids of revolution on either side of that line will be equal. I just shrank our work for problem C. Here's a copy of the picture. And remember, we're now looking for a vertical line. Um, so I'll just draw it like that. This is the vertical line X equals K. And we need to make sure that this volume on the left is the same as this volume on the right, still going from zero to four because that's how the region R is created. So just like with problem B, we'll set up two integrals representing the volume of the side on the left and the volume of the side on the right, set them equal, and then we can solve for K. Now the volume of the solid to the left of X equals K, which perhaps I should have drawn as a curve to more accurately uh, be consistent with the 3D sketch. But regardless, we're integrating from zero to K and we can take the pi out. The radius squared we know is just X DX. So that's going to be the volume of this part of the solid that's to the left of the vertical line X equals K. And this is going to equal pi multiplied by the integral from k to 4 of the radius squared. The radius, again, is just root x, so when we square that, we get x. Now we can evaluate these integrals and then just solve for k. So on the left, we're going to have pi multiplied by 1 half x squared evaluated from 0 to k. This equals, on the right, pi multiplied by 1 half x squared evaluated from k to 4. On the right, we now have pi multiplied by, plug in the upper limit, so 1 half k squared, and then plugging in 0 won't do anything. On the right, we have pi multiplied by, plugging 4 in will give us 8, and then plugging in k for our lower bound, that's going to be minus 1 half k squared, and now we'll just have to solve this for k. On the right, you can see that we have negative half pi k squared. So let's add that to both sides. On the right, we have one half pi k squared, and we're gonna add another half pi k squared from the right. So that's gonna give us a full pi k squared on the left, which equals eight pi. Divide both sides by pi, and we have that k is equal to the square root of 8, right? Divide by pi, take the square root of both sides. k equals the square root of 8, which we can simplify because 8 is 4 times 2. So you can take this uh, square root 4 out, giving us 2 root 2. 
if we were to draw the vertical line, x equals 2 root 2, the volume of the solid to the left would be the same as the volume of the solid to the right. And that's it for our first AP Calculus free response question of the month. Thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you found this video helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math as a channel member to help me create more high-quality calculus content. I'll see you tomorrow for another free response question.